Welcome to Chat Chow, a weekly online show celebrating the personalities in the food industry. Today we're in Hollywood at French Bistro Poppy, chatting it up with Chef Tim Perry. So tell us what you're prepping for here today. Um, prepping for night of service. We have a... Uh... Two first course uh, items, two choices at first course, two choices at main course. Um, right now we're getting some of the root vegetables done because they need the longest time to cook for the main courses. Uh, we're cooking off uh, celery root in some different manners for uh, preparations of celery root, going with an arctic char. Yeah. And we're also cooking some turnips we've got here, some really, really pretty turnips. Okay. <laughs> so we'll boil those, blanch them, and then glaze them. Um, Little root carrots, little baby carrots, all sorts of fun stuff. Yummy. <laughs> so can you tell us about the experience of eating here? You have like a smaller restaurant, very intimate, the menu's kind of up to you. The menu uh, changes weekly. It is, I guess, up to me, up to us. Um, it's directly dictated by what's in season, what's available at the farmer's markets. Okay. Um, we're getting the pick of the, uh, I guess not litter, the pick of the harvest from the uh, sort of farmers at our local markets, whether it's Santa Monica, uh, Hollywood, of course Hollywood, or uh, Pasadena. And we're turning out um, a three-course menu. All right, so where do you get the inspiration every week to kind of create this new menu? Just what, what do you see in the farmer's market? Is that mostly? I mean, yeah, that's a big part of it. And the other is I'm kind of forced to create something by uh, a deadline. So, right. <laughs> you know, procrastination often gets the better of me. And, comes time to think of something new, we'll go buy uh, some really, really good looking vegetables, not convolute or complicate the flavors, and you know, uh, there will be a, a protein or a protein preparation that will fall in line with that. And so far, we've been uh, exceedingly happy with all the dishes we put out. Yeah. It's yeah. been uh, quite hard to let some of them go. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about eating with the seasons. Um, it's, it's a necessity. I mean, there are, there are reasons why you don't see, for instance, a tomato at a you know at a farmers market, a local farmers market in February, for the most part. Um, they don't grow here, and we should be eating things that that grow during their season, that grow locally. Then we're supporting local businesses, we're supporting our infrastructure. We're not paying for a broker to bring in product from, say, Chile or somewhere in South America that's never going to have the ideal flavor. Um, Things are, you know, dictated by nature, and they're going to uh, they're going to grow when they want to. Um, and to that effect, we're also not going to complicate a bunch of flavors. We try to go after one or two uh, flavors or one or two different vegetables, and follow those through a dish. You're not going to see a whole lot of ragus or medleys or things like that. And that's something that's unique to living in Southern California. That what's available to us, fresh and truly local, within you know a half a day's drive is unparalleled throughout the rest of the country and world. Um, so we can have lots of different choices. I can go through, you know, what is it, uh, 15 or 20 weeks of winter and fall and use different vegetables in a limited menu every week. So we try not to repeat things too often. I think your wines. I, I don't. I oh, who does? The wines are done by Santos, the owner. Um, okay. He's the, uh, he's the one of file. I tend to drink a lot of beer. A lot of your other green bottles <laughs> and IPAs and things like that that he doesn't want to buy for here because he probably assumes correctly that I'll drink them. But he's the one passionate about the wine. He's got a really eclectic and interesting wine list. Lots yeah. of wines. They're all old world. Lots of wines from Croatia, Slovenia, Hungary, not just France. Right. And it's something he's passionate about and proud of. And to that end, we don't actually allow outside bottles in here. Okay. We don't have a corkage. Uh, Santos wants people to get a feel for the culture of this gastronomic movement and part of that is subscribing to the food we uh, put out and also subscribing to our, uh, our wine list and wine program. I think that's great. You don't have to make a lot of decisions. Just kind of relax and eat and that's let someone else choose for you. That's how it should be. It definitely. Um, last question. What would you be doing if you weren't a chef? <laughs> um, fishing. <laughs> Probably fun. not for a living. Just a fish bump. <laughs> Or in sales, or some sort of, uh, you know, super stressful job like that that wouldn't yeah. provide a creative outlet for me at all. So this is a perfect job for you. <laughs> um, I don't know if any job is a perfect job. I'd rather not be working at all, but uh, 
but this is it's a challenge for me and it's at the end of the day it's what I want to do. Awesome. All right well thanks so much for your time. No thank you for your time. We're so excited we're going to come here next week. Cool. Thank you so much. Sabrina? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah.